Uh, I'm going to start off our review of the math topics for Big O by talking about properties of exponents. And I'm going to ask you to take out a piece of paper. Okay. So I don't mean to insult any of you. It's just that it's been a while, so I just want to make sure that we're all up to speed. Uh, so who can tell me, if I have A to the B, C like this, is this the same, question mark, as A to the B to the C, and is that also the same as A to the C to the B? Are these all the same, yes or no? You discuss with your partner for a second, and then I'll ask for a hand. Okay, Ms. Mila, what do you think? Yes, they're all the same. So we're all good there. And if I was going to write this without a minus sign, how would I do that, Mr. Franovic? And now, if I was going to write this as a single A, how would I write that here? Mr. F, sorry. And how much is this if A is not equal to zero? Yes, sir. That's equal to one. Are we all good there? Okay. Next topic we need to discuss is N behavior. So I'm going to put up an expression on the board. And one of the terms in the expression is going to drive the end behavior of the expression. And I would like to know, what is that term? OK, so here's the, here's the term. f of n equals uh, 6 plus 2n plus uh, 0 0.0003 uh, n to the fourth plus 9999 n to the third plus 6 n square. Now I would like you to talk to your partner about which of these terms is going to dominate the expression as n gets larger and going to drive the n behavior of the expression. What do you think? What do you think? One of these is going to drive the n behavior of the expression. OK, Mr. Mr. Mulcahy, sir, did I mention how well your brother is doing in my class? Very nice. Sir, uh, one of these terms is more important than the others, and it drives the end behavior of the function. Which one is it, sir? Sorry? Uh, OK, which one is it? Just say it out for me. OK, this one right here. We all agree, right? This is going to drive the term, the expression here. Now, let's say that I was to convert this into a negative number here like that, right? Now, how would that change the end behavior? Mr. Joji, what do you think, sir? Um, it, would go down. it would go down. So you remember that when you did end behavior, you looked at what happens like here, this was an example, or maybe like that. You remember that, right? And then there was another one where it was like this. Remember that? And then there was another one like this. <clears throat> and then you could have other stuff also. You could have like something where it's just like flat. It goes just the end behavior is just flat, like that, right? So you've seen all of these, right? OK, so I need to explain to you now, this end behavior concept is sort of reused in our big O but there's some mild changes that are made. First, what we're interested in, um, instead of having a continuous function, like you, know, you have like x and y and you have continuous variables, we're going to make it more discrete, where we're only interested in entering integers in for the independent variable. Usually we use n for the independent variable and only integers. The n represents the size of our data. So what's the smallest value we could have for n? Yes, miss? You can't really have negative data, Miss Mila, and that was actually my point. So what's the smallest we could have? Zero. So unlike these other charts that you see here, we're only interested in this half of the graph, this part here, where n, and n for us is going to be on this axis right here, right? And here, does anybody know what's going to be on this axis here? Yes, sir. Uh, we'll call it t. What do you think that means, time? So we're only going to be interested in um, 
the, the right half part of these graphs. That's the only thing we're interested in because, and the reason why it's different from math is because you can't have like negative seven sets of data. There's no such thing. Yes, sir? I thought it's not like how long it takes, but it's how many cycles or how many things. We're going to talk about that. So uh, here t, t, t is not going to exactly mean time. It's going to be something related to time, but your point is well taken. Okay, so let's look over here now. And so we've decided, now, if I have integers coming here, will I get a continuous graph here? If I have some function, like let's say I go, uh, let me give you an example. This is f of n equals n cubed. But then I say that n is only integers. Will this be a continuous function? It will not, right? So what will it be? If I was going to draw... Here, let me, get, let me get to a practical example right away. If, if I say f of n equals n cubed, and I say that n is greater than or equal to 0, you agree that the graph should look like this, right? However, we just said that n can only be integers, like 0, 1, 2. How will the shape of this graph change if n can only be integers? Miss Olivia? Dots. It'll be dots. You're good with that, right? However, no one draws it like that. Everyone in computer science draws it like this. But try to understand that they're just drawing it like that because they're lazy. They really mean that it should be dotted. Where are we on my list here? OK. So the big O that we're going to talk about is somewhat related to end behavior. Now we're going to talk a little bit about logarithms. In math, what is the base of that logarithm? Yes, sir. That's a log base 10. See that, right? OK. In math, what is the base of this logarithm? Yes, sir, Ben? That's the base e. How do I say log base 2 of n? How do I write that? Yes, Ms. Mila? That's how we write some other base, right? Now, in computer science, it's going to be slightly different. And I'll explain either at the end of today's class or more likely the next time I see you why it's going to be different. But when I write this in computer science, the base of that log is any number. Most people think it's base 2, but it's not. It's all the bases. And the reason that it's all the bases is we're going to show later it doesn't matter what the base is. So we're going to categorize an entire category of functions as being log n type, and we don't really care what the base of the algorithm is, a base of the logarithm is. OK? So in computer science, this log n refers to any base, not just base 10 as it is in mathematics. All right? How do we write the log of a particular base? We would have to write the number. That won't be that useful for us when we do big O notation, though. You'll see later on today or more likely next time. OK, what else do we have here? Uh, talked about continuous versus discrete. OK. OK. So in physics, most of the graphs you've seen in your life and uh, the experiments that you run, what is usually one of the more important independent variables here? Yes, sir? Time. And then what do you put over here usually? like distance or some other thing, right? Like it can be distance or some other thing that's changing. One of the things that's going to take your brain a little getting used to is that when we do big O graphing, time is no longer the independent variable. Time is now going to be the dependent variable. What's the independent variable? I already mentioned it earlier today. Yes, Ms. Mila? Uh, sort of. Yes, sir? It's going to be n, which refers to how many data sets you have, the size of your data. So for big O analysis, n is the independent variable. How many things are we going to plug into our program, right? And t is going to be the dependent variable. It'll take you a while to get used to the idea that t is a dependent variable. Now, some of you have remember this from CSA or maybe even computer science principles, and some of you won't remember it. 
So I'll just uh, go it over with you again. Let's say I have a sorted list like this. 1, 3, 7, 14, 19, 20, 22, and 25, like this, OK? And let's say I tell you I'm thinking of a number on this list. I'm thinking of a number on the list. And you want to guess the number. You could say, you could start the guessing like this. You could say, is your number 1? Is your number 3? Is your number 7? Is your number 14? Is it 19? What kind of search am I doing here, Mr. Shulson? Um, <clears throat> linear. linear search. Good. See that? Linear search. Is there a faster way? Mr. Alejandro, is there a faster way, sir? Uh, yeah, binary. binary search. So, sir, let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, let's say I add one more number here just to make it an odd number. Okay, sir, if I was going to do a binary search, what question would I ask first, sir? Okay, so here's the middle number. So I would ask, is the number you're looking for uh, greater than or equal to 19, something like that? And if they say yes, what would you do? Yes, Mr. Franovic? You get rid of this other half, and then you focus on this half, like that. We're good? Now, if you were to keep doing this, roughly in a worst case scenario, how many questions would you have to ask if you had n numbers? Like you have n numbers, how many questions, how many yes-no questions would you have to ask? Mr. Franovic, sir? Uh, log base n minus 1. Log base n minus 1. I'm going to call it log n instead because there's some question about when you have one left, is there still a question to be asked or not? And what would be the base of that logarithm, sir? So you can see that if you were to do a bisection search, this is how many guesses you have to make in order to find the number in the worst case scenario. We're good? OK, so let's put that aside for a second. There's a small lab. I think I'll probably give it to you next time. Uh, and that, that'll be about bisection search right there. OK, now I'm going to ask you to I want to make sure you've got a good grasp of this math. This is going to be an important question. I'm going, to draw, I'm going to write some functions on the board. I want you to categorize them from slowest, uh, slowest growing to fastest growing. So let me show you what I mean. If I write n squared and I write n cubed, which one grows faster? Grows faster. Yes, Mr. Ben? Uh, n cubed grows faster. You see that, right? So if I was to draw, right? So let's say I have uh, n squared over here then n cubed might be, n cubed grows faster. So n cubed is going to be like that. So this would be n cubed, and this is going to be n squared. See, it's growing faster. We're good? OK, so now I'm going to write down a whole bunch of functions. So in this case, n squared would be to the left of n cubed when you're writing them all down. So I'm going to write a bunch of functions down. I want you to work with your partner and try and figure out the order in which you should place these functions from, slowest, uh, from uh, slowest growing to fastest growing, OK? So here we go. I think I got them all. Uh, oh, one more, one more, one more. That's an important one. OK, I think we're, we're going uh, to try and categorize these functions from slowest growing to fastest growing. So please do that now. Yes, sir? What is k? k is a constant. Here, let me give you an example. Here, look, look, look. f of n equals 3. Okay. That's like a constant function. OK. I need to hear some solutions now. And what I want to know is we're going to rank these from slowest to fastest. And I'm going to use my red crayon to rank them. And which one grows the slowest? Miss Mila? Okay. okay, so this will be number one in our ranking. What would be the next one here? Who can tell me? Mr. Ben? Uh, the second board. Okay, so this is number two. Very good. Uh, who can tell me what's the next one after that? Yes, sir? Six. Mr. Alejandro? Miss Mila. Um, that is 
Yes, Mila. Okay, this will be number five. And uh, yes, sir, Mr. Basu. Thank you. Okay, this is number six. And now what? Yes, Mila. Four and six. This will be number seven. And now it gets a little harder. What do you think here, Mr. Frenovic? That's number eight. Uh, yes, Mr. Alejandro. Yes, sir, Mr. Okay, this is nine and this is ten. Now, uh, we're going to, by the way, is, is log n a, a, a polynomial function? Okay, log n is not polynomial. However, because we're computer scientists and we don't really eat lunch with the math people, in here, we're just going to call it polynomial. Just don't tell any of the math teachers. We're just going to refer to these basic... By the way, is, that a poly, is this a polynomial? Is that a polynomial? No. Yes, it is. That one you can't mess up. That one everyone agrees is a polynomial. Okay? So, um, so the only one we're kind of bending the, uh, we're not bending it, we're actually changing it. The definition is the log ones, and we're going to say it's polynomial. So, just one second, sir. We're going to categorize all of these into one of two categories, polynomial or non-polynomial. And when I say non-polynomial, that means they grow faster, which is a bad thing in computer science. So I want to know where should I draw the line between the polynomials on the left and the non-polynomial uglier functions that are growing too fast for us on the right. Where should I draw the line? Discuss with your partner. Uh, where do we draw the line? Where do we draw the line? Polynomial and non-polynomial. Where should we say, okay, these are the bad ones, these are the good ones? What do you think? Wait, so are the polynomials the bad ones? No, the polynomials are the good ones, miss. The non-polynomials, those are trouble. Yes, sir? That's definitely a bad one, but there's some other bad ones on this, on this board also. What do you think, miss? Uh, two raised to the n. Say again? Two to the yes. So here, anything that is slower than this is considered polynomial, even though technically, like I said, log is not a polynomial function. But the computer scientists will say that. So basically, these are all, and this one, are polynomial, and these, see these? These are the troublemaker non-polynomial ones. You okay so far? All right. Now, the polynomials, and this is where the story starts to get a little strange, and I'm going to finish with a tiny little bit of history. All right. So in math, when we have functions that are polynomials or we have a process that follows a polynomial distribution, we, dis we abbreviate that as P. And then, does anybody know how we abbreviate a non-polynomial function? NP. And now, this is where the story starts to get weird. I want you to imagine some natural process like, uh, let's say we're, American Airlines is trying to figure out when to uh, fuel their planes, right? So they want to know like between which cities, what's the formula, whatever. That is generally considered to be an NP problem. It's a really, really hard problem, and it's a non-polynomial process. Now, here's the really weird part to this story. There's a bunch of mathematicians out there, not him. I, I don't know what he believes. There's a bunch of mathematicians out there who believe that all the non-polynomial processes out there, they actually have a polynomial solution. We just haven't found it yet. These people who believe that, that the non-polynomial problems in the world can be reduced to a polynomial solution. We just aren't smart enough, haven't figured it out yet. They believe this thing that P equals NP. Now, I'm going to guess that of all, if you, if you were to survey maybe like 100 random mathematicians, the people who believe this is probably less than 10, I'm guessing. And those people are crazy. They're crazy. But here's the weird part. We can't seem to disprove them. And people are trying really, really hard to disprove this. In fact, there are seven problems in mathematics 
where if you can prove or disprove them, the math police will give you one million dollar prize. Okay, I forget what the name of the committee is, but they have million dollar prizes lined up to anyone who can solve any of these seven problems. There used to be eight problems, by the way, and one of them got solved. Guess who solved it? That guy. Now, that guy is 56 years old, and he lives with his mom, and he hasn't been married. But the weird part to this story is that after he solved this problem, which was it, what was it called? Something conjecture or something. I don't even remember what it was. They came to his house to give him the money. He's like, I just solved it for the fun of it. I, I don't need the million dollars. Math guy. So now the other seven problems are still out there. And one of them is this one. And this one looks so simple. And yet people, mathematicians, the best in the world, they cannot prove or disprove this, th this theorem, this idea. I don't know what you call it, conjecture, whatever you call it. Okay? But I, I'm just putting that out there. Now, what does this have to do with our uh, big O uh, analysis? We're basically interested in trying to figure out when we have a computer algorithm, we want to know how good is the algorithm? How much time does it take for the algorithm to run? Now, let's say that I give you a problem to solve, and you write an algorithm with software to solve it, and I write an algorithm with software with a, to solve it, and we want to compare the two algorithms. Okay? What's wrong with this? I take the algorithm, we agree on the data set, maybe like uh, 100,000 data items, right? I go to my machine at home, I run it, you go to your machine at your house, you run it, and we compare how much time it took you to run it versus how much time it took me to run it. What's wrong with that scenario? Your computer might be like 10 years old and mine might be like bought yesterday from Best Buy. Is that a fair comparison? No. So what we need to do is, as computer scientists, we need to put our math hat on and we need to have some objective way of categorizing the algorithms to say, that the speed of this algorithm falls into this category or that category. And generally speaking, generally speaking, what we want is we want to create computer science algorithms that fall into which category? Yes, sir? Polynomial. We want polynomial algorithms. We don't want this. Because what happens when we have a non-polynomial algorithm is that as, as the data sets gets large, the time it takes to complete the algorithm just becomes, well, non-polynomial, and it just grows too fast. And so it takes too long to solve the problem. See that? Now, I need to explain a couple, one other thing to you, and then we're going to go to the lab and have a little time uh, to ourselves. Let's say I have n over here, and let's say I have, uh, I'll call it t for now. We'll change that a little bit later. Uh, but let's say I have these two algorithms, and this one is like this, right, like that. And then let's say that the other one goes like this, right, and then this one goes like that, and then this one goes like that. Now, would you agree with me that, uh, would you agree with me that for some values of n, the black algorithm is better, uh, as in it finishes faster, and then for other al uh, values of n, the red algorithm is better and finishes faster. Would you agree with me on that? Okay. Now, <clears throat> which of these algorithms is going to be better in terms of finishing quicker when n gets very large? Which one is going to be better? Who has not helped me yet today? Mr. Nikita. The, the red one, no, sir, the red one is trouble, sir. Look, as n gets bigger, this one, it, it increases in time at a faster rate than the black one. You, you see that? Red is bad here. But you're like, oh, it's good down here. We don't care about down here. We only care about when n gets really big. And when n gets really big, the red one is problematic. The black one is much nicer because it doesn't go up as fast. See, here's the time. Right? You can see it takes longer for the, for the black algorithm to go up versus the red one. The red one, after you get past this point right here, you can see that this one is going to go up at a faster rate. So it's going to take more time to finish the red one. Here are the things that are going to confuse you. 
You see this part here? Ignore it. The only thing we care about is when the algorithms do not cross again. So we have this point here where n equals k or some, some constant, and that's the only thing we care about, what's to the right of that. So it, it, it's not middle behavior, it's end behavior. You see that, right? It's end behavior. It's not middle behavior or beginning behavior.